Alright, what's going on people? It's Versus Z here and it's finally time for my freaking Ah, you can't even see him. There you go. This guy. I don't even need to say his name. Well, you guys already know. High grade, 1 to 144 scale, double O Gundam. And man, I hope you guys can, like, see why it took me forever to finish this guy. I've detailed him up the ass. You want to see how badly I detailed him? Here's a sticker sheet. I didn't use shit. It's still there. Yeah, man, I've got, like, might as well talk about the colors right now. I've got the, I've got the, uh, the gray painted on the legs and the feet where they should have been painted. I got the metallic green behind the clear parts. There's blue, yellow, white, uh, clear red for the uh, V thin, the clear blue for the weapons. If you can see them, hopefully you can. What else did I paint? Uh, the gold thrusters back here, and oh yeah, the gray areas on the forearms there. Oh, a couple other places. The face, check out the face. I detailed it all the way down. Panel line the face. Gray area on the cheeks. Got the black vents, I guess. The yellow on the B pin, and yeah, the clear red on the crown crystal, I guess. And then there's the, uh. Hope you guys can catch the, uh. Light piping effect. I did the light piping effect on this guy, by the way, so. Yep, well, let me take him down and let me get to the articulation. Or, not the articulation, but the accessories. Man, man, the accessories. Not much to talk about, but you can get you can get quite a few poses. A lot, actually. Um, you guys probably saw that the two uh, GN swords were connected, but I'm not going to show you guys how to do it because it's going to take away the fun of showing you guys, or that's going to take away the fun away from you guys of trying to figure out how to do it. It's not that hard, I'll tell you that. So yeah, his only accessory, GN Sword 2, dub GN Sword 2, pretty simple looking. Um, you have the blade here, and clear blue, gray, which can transform into, or I don't know what it's called, I don't, it's not transformed, but it can change into beam rifle mode. Pretty much you take this off, Bag it back in, make sure it's sideways and flat like that. Kind of looks like a duck. Take the blue part, fold it down, split the handles, take the uh, handle, that part of the handle down, and take the gun stock and align it, I guess. And there you have it, beam rifle. And you can store them on the side of the, uh, on the side skirts of the double O gun thing, which I'll talk about right now, hopefully. He won't be completely straight while I talk about him, and while he's not straight, I'm going to get to the articulation. The head is very stiff. It's on a ball and socket joint. It can go up and down pretty far. Yeah, I can. It can rotate on the. It can rotate fully on the joint, but like I said, it's pretty tight, and it's got a fair degree of the head bobbling. The uh, these sets of parts here are pretty articulated themselves. Ball and socket joint on the backpack. There's a turning joint up here. And you have this joint which just goes up and down. Not too far, but not a big deal. The arms, which, man, oh my god, they shine. Uh. Ooh. So, let me take the arm off show you guys what's different about this. It's a new type of peg and socket joint that you don't normally see in high grade 1 to 144 scales. I've seen this though in the uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms or better known Sun Gokuden um, Super Deformed Kits. Yeah, it's really nice how they put them on here. It's really, it's really nice. It's a really nice touch. So you can get a good amount of forward and backwards plus the ball and socket um, type articulation. <laughs> It can oh crap! It can go pretty high without it popping off. Trust me. Um, rotation under the shoulder. Three or was it 
I'll call it four points of articulation on the elbow. So you got one, two, three right there in that part, and four on the hand, on the wrist, the ball and socket joint wrist. Speaking of ball and sockets, you can move on to the chest area or the torso. Um, very exclusive for high grades. There's a ball and socket joint up there and a ball and socket joint on the bottom one. If you guys saw my um, Wing Zero custom review, it's very similar to that. So you can get a fair amount of wiggle on the torso. And side to side, well not, not even side to side, but 360 rotation on the bottom portion. And for some reason the front skirt here, this new type of front skirt, is on a ball joint. So it can kind of like unhinge itself and move around. I don't know what for. Um, ball joints for the side skirts, and as you can see, there's the hole which you can stick the pegs on the uh, Gensor 2s. Just stick them in there. And unlike Exia, articulation is not limited. And you'll see when you, if you do pick this model up yourself, you'll see what I'm talking about. And this here, just the back skirt with two beam sabers, which come with no beams, unfortunately. But from what we all know. You can take 1 to 100 scale um, master grades maybe, master grade beams, and you can place them in and they fit perfectly. So, you, you, you got Sephiroth here. You pretty much got Sephiroth. Ooh, the pig from the stand is still under him. Poop that out. Legs. Oh my god. More sexiness. So you can get a fa pretty much a fair amount. It's not a ball joint. It's more like a new type of peg joint. You can get not a fair, but you can get an excellent amount of articulation on the legs until they get stopped by that. So you can get, there's a point of articulation on that portion of the leg, and then you have the top portion of the leg right there. And it gets even better. You can get a nice flush leg pose there. The uh, feet so that flap there moves. The feet are on two um, ends. It's got a peg up there, which will allow it to go forward. Then it's on the ball and socket joint on the bottom, which will allow it to go even more forward. So you can get about that. The downward movement is not that bad at all, though. Um, pretty much there. Almost, almost straight and flush. And the new joint, which they exclusively put on this guy a side to side joint for the ankles and I really love that and man let's see if I forgot anything don't know if I did forget anything but if I did I'm sorry I mean there's two other reviews two or three other the other reviews on this guy that man if I even made a mistake you guys could even watch a different review just to catch it but I think that should be it for this guy. I mean, I don't know what else I could say. Um, I guess I have time to show you how I connected the swords, so let me do that then. And there you go. You got the... Uh, double-edged Gian Sword 2. And I swear you guys have probably seen this before in like picture reviews of uh, maybe the uh, the robot Damashi version which is just an action figure in Japan and then you got you have the uh, super deformed double O which just came out and to my knowing it's actually better equipped than this guy because all he comes with is the two Gian Sword 2's and that's about it. And Speaking of that, I'd like to point out a couple things, and you guys are probably already you guys probably already know this, but there are slots and holes all over this guy that would make it seem like there is an expansion or something getting ready for him, and I'm sure there is because I've seen pictures. And if it's not for the old riser set, then it's probably for the Double O Seven Sword version, which is pretty much the Avalanche version of Double O and it looks pretty beasty and yeah I don't know what else to say except uh, hope you guys enjoyed this review 
I'm really excited about the uh, Keradim Gundam, the Arios and Cerevi. They should be coming whenever they get released. I'm expecting Keradim next month, and for now I'll be working on my Master Grade version 2.0 Titans uh, Gundam Mark II. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.